I'm going to talk today about research and how research can help validate some of the things I'm saying and where you're going to find that the research is hard to find or lacking, right? And you know, this this got triggered. There's this guy in my school community that asked me about research a lot, and he wants to kind of further the thinking and the understanding of this biomechanical process, which I completely get. And I'm sure it's frustrating for him and others sometimes that you know, some of the things I'm saying really require quite a leap of faith, right? Because the research is not really there. Like, there's not studies I can point to. And there's not studies, like official studies and peer-reviewed research papers that I've done myself. But today I'm going to talk a little bit about some of the things that do exist and where I think more research is necessary. What kind of things can research show you? Research is not completely useless for this stuff. I used to do a ton of research when I first got into this. Before I first started Starecta in 2014, I would research and Google every night until I fell asleep for several hours because I was in a very extreme situation where I needed to find the answer. Otherwise, we were going to have to, you know, I was going to have to quit my job so I couldn't retain information. I was spending an absolute ton of time on sites like PubMed reading about, you know, dental and TMJ journals, right? And there's a lot of interesting stuff and I, I would continue to kind of visit these some of these reports in the in the years following and some of the things that you'll find like i remember reading papers about vertical height because quite a bit of research has been done like adding vertical height um, with splints and flat plane splints you have you know research that dr brennan stack and the and lee have done and they've created some youtube videos i remember watching you know reading about this one guy who was wearing like some kind of like a flat plane splint and adding a lot of vertical and how you know, all these different things corrected on him. And that was always something that stuck in the back of my mind in the past years. The other thing that you'll find is on kids, they've been doing these molar buildups, which are essentially like flat composite that go on the back teeth, baby teeth of kids. And they've been doing this on kids for quite a number of years. There's a fair bit of research around the effect of that. And it's been quite effective. What kind of things will research not show you? First, let me refer to my friend, my old friend Marcello, because I never want to take his credit. You know, some of these concepts he came up with, he was discussing with me, he started publishing them on certain sites. And so I want to I give him the credit that he deserves, which is referring to the inflating of the skull and the skeleton was something that he was doing before me. Right. And it was based on, I guess, some of his own experiments. And I, you know, I was seeing same, similar things, but I wasn't thinking about it in that way. And he would often talk about how you're fixing the problem by inflating the skull and the cranial bones start to come back into place. And this is this is one thing where I think he was looking at some research, but he, a lot of it came from his own kind of like way of thinking. Another one was this whole curvisby. So curvisby is a dental concept that's probably you know, from the late 1800s. I don't think that a lot of research will use the word and its importance the way I do. But again, this is Marcello back in the day, probably in the 16, 17, starting to put together the pieces around this curvisby and its importance, especially given that me and his specific situation was that we had our teeth drilled and therefore like the curvisby was flattened and we saw the direct impact of that the curvisby helped us understand what was going on and then i in hearing him talk about it i later validated it with some of my own experiments back at like 17 and 16. another one that he came up with was the job being supported in multiple bite positions or the lingual bite and he was talking a lot about the Gerber lingualized bite and had read a bunch of research. And this is something he was talking about a lot in various Facebook groups. And it kind of explained why he and then I were not getting the results that we wanted with Starecta at the time. You know, the Starecta, you basically locked a single bite position. Whereas with this lingual bite concept, you cannot lock a single bite position. Rather, the jaw requires several in order to get the soft tissue stretched. So this is another one that he came up with. And if you look at old Facebook posts by Marcello in certain Facebook groups, you might find him talking about that. Now, I'm going to talk a little bit about pieces of the puzzle that I came up with. So these are things that you probably won't find in research because they were my own conclusions based on my experiments with myself. One is that there's two rules to how the skull inflates. One is adding vertical height. The second one is 
unlocking the occlusion, right? These are things that I cannot point to someone that I specifically took that from. There were things that I concluded based on logic, based on my experiments, right? And they were different from, for example, the way Marcello thought, because he thought you had to have these multiple locking jaw positions. And then I found that if you just added height, you could actually make it a completely flat contact and you're going to improve just the same or even faster. Another one is that but all you needed to improve was essentially this mouth guard, right? Nobody was really saying you were going to fix TMJ and you were going to, you know, reverse the aging process and all these things with a mouth guard, right? Even Marcello. I, I think the closest thing was Dr. Yeonjin Lee, who was using a similar sort of mouth guard on neurological patients. But I realized through my own experience that it really was that simple. Like a simple mouth guard was all you needed to start reversing all these really damaging things. And another one, because I saw the impact on my cognitive function and my ability to focus, that is where I began concluding that things like ADHD are just a direct function of these biomechanics. I, I think ADHD, all it is, is these biomechanics. It is the symptoms of mechanical collapse on your skull and you know, your inability to focus as a result. So that is something that I was feeling you know, every time I got better, my focus improved if to my worse, it got worse, and it felt like ADHD. So that was one thing that I came up with. Another one that you won't find in the research is my FAST method, right? And the FAST method has pretty far-reaching implications because it allowed me to kind of break through these typical plateaus that you would top out at and then keep going and pushing. And when you keep going and pushing, you see just how far these biomechanics go. So my FAST method, and when I reached what I call the end years back around 2016, is how I concluded that this is probably what, you know, this stuff is aging. And that if you reverse it, you're reversing the aging process. And that this stuff is probably the root cause of almost all disease. This is stuff I only concluded because I saw how far you could push these biomechanics. Those are the things that if you look them up, you're not going to find much because it came out of my head. And it came out of my own experiments and logical conclusions, right? And so the only place you're going to find it written in that way is probably in my, you know, stub stack and my previous social media posts. To wrap up, I think it's important, a lot more research is going to come in the coming years. I've done a bit of research myself, and it was part of how I laid some of the initial thinking. Marcello played a very important influential role on me putting together this puzzle, and he put together a very important piece of it. And then I added, in my view, to that puzzle by putting together some other pieces based on my own experiments and iterations, and therefore... Some of those things that me and Marcello were coming up with are you're not going to find like a lot of research on. But what I would say is that a lot of how this works and why it works is still a bit of a black box. Like I know that it does work. I know how far I'm pretty sure it goes. I don't know all the nuances of how it works. Like what actually happens to your body? Why does the soft tissue rip? Like what's actually happening to the skeleton? These are things that I think, you know, people that are passionate about this stuff in the years ahead are going to fill in the gaps. And uh, I'm really excited for those people to do that and to understand what's been happening to my body in a lot more depth. Because the thing that I've concluded is it's just extremely complex. Like I, it, it hasn't been anything that I could predict. There's nothing that somebody's written out there that I think accurately reflects the process that I've gone through. And the way I describe it is, you know, everything that happens to your body and your body like impacts everything else. Like it's all part of the same fabric. And I think in, in the years ahead, that mystery is going to start to unravel little by little. And I'm excited for that. Thank you.